screw together, as well as seven places around the gyroscope frame. It will provide hours of amusement and learning by showing just how gyroscopic forces affect our daily lives. Today, they can be found in aircraft, satellites and many other guidance systems. Made from solid brass, aircraft grade aluminium and stainless steel. All of the components are precisely manufactured with state-of-the-art machines. We use some of the most accurate equipment available to detect the slightest imbalance. The brass rotor is dynamically balanced to within a few thousandths of a gram and assembled with ultra-low noise bearings. This meticulous attention to detail produces a true precision instrument that will last for years. The set includes the Super Precision Gyroscope with electric starter motor and gimbals kit, complete with manuals and storage case. Our gyroscope is ideal for schools, universities or anyone who just enjoys using well-engineered kit. It also makes a great gift for those with inquisitive minds. Okay, so this is the setup I'm going to be using. Um, you'll notice this side, there's like a blanking insert that goes into the bearing housing on this side. And on this side, you attach the motor. So the hole is empty, just the, with the um, spindle um, sticking through. So I quickly realized that when I spun this thing up, due to the um, presence of material here and the absence of material here, there was a weight imbalance. Um, so I contact the manufacturer and um, asked them if this is expected and they confirmed it was and offered to make me a one-off um, insert to go in here for free. Um, but they also suggested that what I could do is use some Play-Doh, some kids plasticine. So I did that, I got some of my uh, daughter's Play-Doh, just spun it up to speed with the motor and then inserted this into the hole. That seemed to do the trick. I was able to balance it perfectly. Before I put this in, the the extra weight caused this side to drop every time. And if it was over here, it would drop this way. So that's how I overcame that. Um, I've attached the whole setup to a protractor, which I've blue tacked to the table. And I've blue tacked the, the actual um, the frame to the table as well. So this here is the angle that we're looking for. So what we're looking for is this effect. See how the gyro wants to rotate and stay in the original orientation? Well that angle that it's rotating, that this bar appears to be rotating over the vise, that is the angle that we're looking for. That is the angle that we should be able to calculate this uh, gyroscope moving due to the rotation of the earth underneath us. So without further ado, let's get on to the test. So I've just attached the motor there um, it actually takes four AA batteries to power it um, and I've run this test quite a number of times now and put quite a few batteries through it so I kind of know how long they're going to last and what sort of sound comes from the motor um, depending on how much power is left in the batteries and I'd say there's about probably 75% power left in them at the minute and that's based on 12,000 RPM maximum that's probably about 8 or 9,000 RPM for this particular test So it's getting up to speed now. I'm going to remove the motor and replace it with the, the piece of Play Doh to get it perfectly balanced. And now I'm going to demonstrate some precession by gently pressing on the, uh, the horizontal bar there. And now I'm going to line it up as best I can. So that you cannot see the 
um, the, br the brass flywheel from above, and it's as, it's as sort of um, straight up and down as possible. So if we just take note of where we are now, at um, you can see a zero on the top right, just to the top to the right of the bar. You can see a zero just there, and you'll note that you cannot see the brass um, flywheel from above now. So we are sort of dead centre above it. So now it's just a waiting game. So while we wait, um, let's just have a look at a brief history of the gyroscope, up to the point where it was first proposed that it could record the uh, spin of the Earth. So this is just sort of one example that I found on the internet, there are lots and lots of different accounts and they all differ slightly, um, but this one seemed like a sort of all, all round recount of history. So in early times people discovered the spinning top a toy with a unique ability to balance upright while rotating rapidly. Ancient Greek, Chinese and Roman societies built tops for games and entertainment. The Maori in New Zealand have used humming tops with specially crafted holes in mourning ceremonies. In 14th century England, some villagers had a large top constructed for a warming up exercise in cold weather. Tops were even used in place of dice. It was not until the late 18th and 19th centuries that scientists and sailors began attempting to use spinning tops as a scientific tool. At the time, sailors relied on sextants for navigation, measuring the angle between specific stars and the horizon. This method was limited, however, if choppy seas or fog obscured the true horizon, or clouds obscured the stars. Searson, an English scientist, noted in the 1740s that the spinning top had a tendency to remain level, even when the surface on which it rested was tilting. He suggested that sailors could use it as an artificial horizon on ships. Unfortunately, when Searson went to sea to test the idea, the ship sank and everyone was lost. A French scientist in the 19th century, Fleuret, created a top that was continuously powered by air jets, blowing into mini buckets on the rim of the wheel, a process that had been used for thousands of gyros since. The first modern gyroscope was designed in the early 1800s by Johann Gottlieb Friedrich von Berhenberger, a professor at the University of Tübingen in Germany. It was made with a heavy ball instead of a wheel, but since it had no scientific application, it faded into history. In the mid-19th century, the spinning top acquired the name gyroscope, though not through its use as a navigational tool. French scientist Leon Foucault had experimented with a long heavy pendulum in an attempt to observe the rotation of the Earth. The pendulum was set swinging back and forth along the north-south plane, while the Earth turned beneath it. Foucault corroborated the observation by using a spinning top in a similar manner. He placed a wheel, rotating at high speed, in a supporting ring in such a way that the axis of the spinning wheel could move independently of the ring. In fact, the supporting ring moved over the course of a day, as it was connected to the surface of the rotating Earth. The axis of the wheel remained pointed in its original direction, confirming that the Earth was rotating in a 24-hour period. Foucault named his spinning wheel a gyroscope, from the Greek words gyros, uh, which is revolution, and scoping, which is to see. He had seen the revolution of the Earth with his gyroscope. So from Wikipedia, Jean-Bernard Leon Foucault, born 18th of September 1819, was a French physicist best known for his demonstration of the Foucault pendulum, a device demonstrating the effect of the Earth's rotation. He also made um, an early measurement of the speed of light, discovered eddy currents, and is credited with naming the gyroscope, although he did not invent it. Foucault was the son of a publisher in Paris, where he was born. After an education received chiefly at home, he studied medicine, which he had abandoned in favour of physics due to a blood phobia. He first directed his attention to the improvement of Louis Daguerre's photographic processes. For three years he was experimental assistant to Alfred Donnet in his course of lectures on microscopic anatomy. In 1851 he provided an experimental demonstration of the rotation of Earth on its axis and became well known to the public by Foucault's work. Foucault achieved the demonstration 
by showing the rotation of the plane of oscillation of a long and heavy pendulum suspended from the roof of the Pantheon in Paris. The experiment caused a sensation in both the learned and popular worlds, and Foucault pendulums were suspended in major cities across Europe and America, attracting large crowds. In the following year, he used and named the gyroscope as conceptually simpler experimental proof. In 1855, he received the Copley Medal of the Royal Society for his very remarkable experimental researches. In 1862, Foucault was made a member of the Bureau de Longitudes and an officer at the Legion of Honour. He became a member of the Royal Society of London in 1864 and a member of the mechanical section of the Institute a year later. He is also credited with determining the speed of light to be 298,000 km per second, which is only 0.6% in error of the currently accepted value, and devising a method of testing the mirror of a reflecting telescope to determine its shape. So reading between the lines, he was a man of significant academic accomplishment and recognition at the time. One has to wonder then why, when you read the Wikipedia article about Leon Foucault, does it have this one line at the end? Near his death, he returned to Roman Catholicism that he had previously abandoned. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. So going back to the test, we've exceeded six minutes now and there's no observable movement. You can still see the zero to the right of the bar in its entirety, and you still cannot see the brass flywheel from above. So how much should the gyro have precessed? What angle should the gyro's axis have moved? The calculation is the sine of the latitude times 15 degrees per hour. My current latitude is exactly 53.06 degrees north. So the angle in which the gyro should have moved in 6 minutes is 1.2 degrees. Now this doesn't sound a lot, but let's assume that Leon Foucault's experiments were performed in Paris. He should have seen even less based on his latitude. And let's not forget that he didn't have an electric motor spinning his gyro up to 9000 rpm. So I'm just going to stop it now. Um, you saw then that there was still plenty of energy left in that flywheel um, and it was able to process when I moved it. So out of sheer curiosity I decided to fix the motor to the gyro uh, and put a counterweight on the other side um, which is slightly heavier than the motor so I counterweighted the counterweight with more play-doh until I got it perfectly balanced uh, and ran the motor for I think it was 10 minutes on this one. Uh, I'll show you a few minutes of it but I'm not going to show you the whole lot. If anybody wants me to I can upload the whole video, it's pretty boring, it just does nothing. Um, but this is now the equivalent of I guess uh, modern aviation, navigational aviation instruments um, you know with sustained rotation. In Foucault's tests um, the rotational velocity would have been um, continually decreasing. If the batteries are fully charged um, I can actually get about 19 minutes of um, sustained rotation once I've taken the motor off um, which is a hell of a lot on this gyroscope. Um, I did actually try putting the motor on and keeping it on and just running it um, I think it was for about an hour with a full set of batteries um, and still I observed absolutely no movement whatsoever so it appears that whether you've got the motor on or you've got it up to speed and then taking it off it doesn't matter, it still doesn't move so I just cut to 10 minutes like I say if anybody wants me to upload the whole 10 minutes I will or if anybody wants to see me put it through for an hour with the motor on I'll video that and show you no movement as well Bearing in mind that after an hour, um, it should have rotated about 12 degrees. These are some of the gyros that Leon Foucault used in his experiments. The large one at the back on sort of a wooden tower was a later edition. That one wasn't uh, manufactured until 1867. Uh, uh, but the, the ones at the front uh, were all part of the same setup um, and they were demonstrated in 1852, so 15 years earlier. Um, and what, what you do is you take the flywheel out of the gimbaled, the brass gimbal um, stand on the rod.